work. And you know, if you have the experience of doing something like this, definitely use the tools and the knowledge that you have to in prototyping because that helps a lot. But you know, pen and paper is fine. I can't draw and I can't program much, so I use pen and paper. Um, so the design document, as I said, it's huge. It's a big ass document. Oh, this all came up. Wait. It lists like the formulas, the functionalities, and so forth. What is it about? It has, there's a lot of RP in it. There's lots of why you're doing it. It's a plus six attack against programmers because they hate them and never read them, but that's okay. We don't read the technical documents, so that's okay. We win. Uh, it's greatly detailed. It's like it goes into the very, like it, it explains why this button is there and why is it there. So when what happens when you click it and what 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 what's the user prompt of it? So it's it's very it can be a very long document, especially if you have a very big feature or huge game. I mean, as you see, we, we always split them up into features or a sub-feature, so the documents tend to be really small and compact, but if you would combine them all together, it would be like, yeah, this thousand-page document. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about Moscow, because I think I really like Moscow, because prioritization is probably one of the best tools you will ever have to see, like, are we on track, where are we going, and do we need this? And it's divided into must, which is like you have to have this to be able to release this game. It's bare bones, it must happen. So we have shoulds. They add a lot of value to the end user, but they're not necessary to you know make the game be valuable. Good fluff, basically. If you want it paint, then you do good. And won't. self explanatory. Ah, there's some pitfalls that I've learned through my years. One thing is, you know, closet no syndrome. You never want to be in that position where you're basically writing a huge document and not talking to anybody, not getting any feedback, not get doing brainstorming, because you will end up loving this little piece of paper, and when it finally gets reviewed, then and people start nitpicking on like, why is it like this? Then you're going to be really, really upset because in your mind, it's going to be the most awesome thing in the world. And why aren't we doing it? Because it's awesome. Everybody would like to play this. But, you know, everybody else is like, uh, no, it doesn't work. So, always keep other people around just to keep you in check because you don't want to fall in that thing. QA is important. I, I, didn't, I, 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 I learned this, but another person I know learned this even better when did not get something tested and went on turn building and did not work at all. He got some wrath from that. Uh, do not forget localization. I worked a lot with localization. And if, if you think about like various regions of the world, for example, France, they will not play your game unless it's in France. It's an awesome game, but they will not play it unless it has been localized. And so don't forget to do that. Because if you're trying to get into a market that is you know, French speaking, then you want to have your friends. But that's like not really design related, but it's good to know. Keep the whole life cycle of the player in mind. If you're designing for somebody who's like at the end and flying huge ass ships, then you want to know how he gets there. Because if you, if you forget that, this steep could be like this, for example, if you think about linear. You want to have it like this. It has to make sense like throughout. And always know why you're doing things. If, if you don't know why and you can't explain, the reason why you're doing a change or a design or, or a game or whatever, then, then why are you doing it at all? Because you will never win that argument. So you have to know exactly why you're doing this specific thing, whatever it is. And if you know that, then you know, have to have a reason. Um, that's basically it. Any questions? Hello. Okay. <laughs> Nobody? Okay, if nobody has any questions, then I I have a lot of questions that might be of interest to you if I ask them. Mm -hmm. okay. um, so, Plani, mm. uh, uh, I agree with you wholeheartedly that the vision part and the goal part is extremely important and that you should drive every kind of game design that you're doing towards that and mm -hmm. perhaps you kind of 
scope down what you are designing towards. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any specific techniques for a group of people uh, to collectively gather a vision or gather a goal or, or stuff like that? Well, the vision you want to have the whole team there, if you're working in a team that is. You want to basically just start a discussion, what do we want to accomplish with this? And I think this kind of comes up organically. I don't think I have really any technique specifically how to accomplish this. Do you? Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> 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 um, okay. Uh, so, uh, there are several very good techniques. Um, one of them, for I mean, because I imagine most of you be it would be small teams of like a couple of individuals, or not, not probably up uh, more than ten. Uh, is that is that somewhat correct or something? Yes. All right. So uh, uh, to gather a, a collective vision, uh, it would be very good for the team to come together and and create the uh, create uh, the box for the game. You know, create the title, mm -hmm. the art in front of it the bullet points of the four key features or whatever it is, the uh, publisher, logo, the, 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 the score it got from some, some, something, something on the back that quickly describes what it is, you know, what it is, why you want to buy this game, mm -hmm. and kind of just physically create this on a piece of paper. That yes. really helps for a group of people to collectively have a vision of what it is that they're doing. And it's very important in kind of like product discovery to have a collective vision of of what it is that you're doing. Another good technique would be to write um, write the uh, the uh, the review for your game as it is uh, as it comes out in PC Gamer six months from now. So if you would open PC Gamer and you would start uh, reading the review about your game, what would the uh, what would the, uh, the the editors or reviewers have written about your game? And of course, give it a score and a star mm -hmm. or something like that. And that helps because. Uh, if you say we're creating a shooter or we're creating a racer to a group of seven people, they will all have kind of different ideas about what a shooter is or what a racer is. Many will think it's a Hello Kitty shooter. Um, so, uh, so then it's good to, uh, to maybe then uh, sit down and compare. Uh, uh, if you say, are we creating a, a, a racer, for instance? And then you would say, well, what kind of racers are out there? Uh, and how do they align? Uh, is our game going to be uh, uh, like uh, Mario Kart racing, or it's going to be like Forza, which is a highly simulative racing game, but Mario Kart is a very kind of arcade similar game. And where on that, uh, those axes does our game fit, mm -hmm. and why, why does it fit there? And, and uh, yeah, those are some techniques, but there are more, and uh, I just can't think of more. Yeah. I mean, there's one thing that we do at CSP specifically in the design group, is basically we just meet and talk, and we just discuss what we, if we have like a, a very uh, bullet point thing, we want to do this, and then what does it mean to us? And then we just discuss it, and then we, I mean, designers really, dis, you know, how do you say it? Uh, that word? They can't come to terms with each other, they always disagree, and uh, yes, they, they, never, they never agree on anything. So it's a really lively discussion that ends up taking like a couple of days. But in the end, we always seem to, if you, if you kind of step back and read between the lines of what we're saying, talking to each other, we notice that we're kind of on the same lines. We just, we're like going on a tangent in a different direction of always. And like, we want this thing, but it doesn't matter because we're always on the same line. We have different priorities. Yes, exactly. So we, we usually find the silver lining at the end. Usually just takes a little time, but. We usually get. Actually, that reminds me. I had a question. When you talk about goals, at first I thought you meant like the game goal, like the, ob the object is to mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah, I mean. But it sounds like you're talking also about marketing goals and. Um, sure. I mean that can be incorporated in there, but you want to have like a, a, a subset goal, like it kind of goes into the game as well. You know, you want to have a, a goal could be that we want. I'm taking this from not Dominion. It's like we want to have more players in in zero zero. That's what that's a goal, so and we have to find a way to accomplish this goal. So that's from a sort of a company. Standpoint. Well, no, so not necessarily. Not necessarily. Well, okay. Let me maybe abstract this up yes. to Steve yes. uh, real quickly. Let's say that you have a game and it's a product, 
and uh, it might cater for different kind of users. So you will have uh, the uh, nine-year-old uh, girl who plays games on, on Facebook, and you will have a 28-year-old uh, hardcore player on his Xbox, but they're playing the same game.